Is it possible to double your productivity when using Lightroom's AI mask? It's possible if you implement these three masking tips and install the free Lightroom preset that I'm going to share in just a moment. Hello, I'm Chris Parker, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. Now, as many of you know, I've been using Photoshop since version one all the way back in 1990, and I'll admit that I rarely use Photoshop for editing my images nowadays, and that's because I can do most of my editing and retouching in Lightroom Classic and even Lightroom CC. And one of the greatest additions of all time to Lightroom is the AI masking tools. It's auto magically delicious if I do say so myself. And that's because with the click of a button, Lightroom will auto magically create up to eight different masks of the person that you're editing, or it can auto select the sky, a subject, or even the background. But the AI mask isn't perfect. And I'm gonna share some tips to avoid common mistakes that will improve your images and boost your productivity. So creating the mask is super duper easy since Lightroom will analyze your image and do all the hard work for you. And it all starts by activating the mask tool from here or by using the keyboard shortcut, which is Shift plus W. And then you need to let Lightroom know what type of mask to create, whether it's for a person or persons, which you can activate from down here, or something more specific like a sky, subject or background from up here. So the tips I'm about to share will cover both portraits and landscapes and the free presets will work for portraits. So let's start with that. So it looks like Lightroom has detected one person and to reveal the hidden mask options, we're going to click on that person. Now the masks haven't been created yet. You first have to select the mask that you want or all of them. And then after clicking on the create mask button, your mask will appear in the masking panel up here, which we'll do in a second. And you'll learn why that's the wrong way to do it. First, let's take a look at how you can access the masks with more than two people or two or more people. So it basically works the same way. However, after choosing one, it will give you a list of all the available masks for only that person. And you'll need to click on add people to tell Lightroom to create masks for them as well. And then you can have up to 16 masks created once you activate each one of these. But that's going to create a huge mess. So let's go ahead and go back to the other image and I'm gonna show you a better way. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all eight and let's go ahead and create them. And the problem now is which one is which? If I wanna work on the lips, for example, there is no way of telling which mask I need to activate since they're all labeled mask one through eight. Now you could hover over each mask to display the overlay to try and find it, or you can click on each and after it expands, you're gonna see the name for that particular mask right here. Now you could do that and rename each mask accordingly, which is going to grind your editing to a snail's pace when you have dozens and dozens of images to edit. So here's a faster way to organize them. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of these and I'm going to go over to my presets. And once I click on Parker Photographic Portrait AI Masks, all eight will automatically be added with the name of the corresponding mask. How cool is that? I love it. So I have a question for you. Would you like this preset for free? Awesome. Check out the link in the description below to download and then to install in Lightroom Classic, you're gonna go over to the left panel here and you're going to click on this plus icon. You're going to hit import presets option. Go ahead and locate the file that you downloaded, select it, and then come down here and hit import. Now, if you're using Lightroom CC, you can import this file to your presets as well and make sure the editing panel is open. Click on the presets button, navigate to these three dots here, and then when you click on it, it's going to reveal the import option and then you can import from here. Now, if you love that masking tip, please give this video a like. And I'll admit that's not the best masking tip that I have. Is it the next one or the last one? Let me know in the comments which of the three is your favorite AI masking tip. So one of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of photographers make and not fix is the side effect of using Lightroom's AI Sky Mask which results in a halo effect. So let me show you an image to show you what that looks like. So this image shows a classic halo effect along the edge of the horizon, as well as above the tree lines over here. 
And if I darken this just a little bit, it's easier to see. So this happens because there isn't a smooth transition of the sky mask going into the horizon or the top of the trees. Either way, that's a dead giveaway that the sky has been edited and it looks unnatural. So there's an easy fix once you know where the hidden button is. So once you've edited your sky the way you like, you're gonna reveal that hidden button, which is in the mask panel, by holding down your Alt or Option key. And then clicking on it will reveal the masking tools that will intersect with the sky mask. So what we're going to do is adjust the sky mask to include a natural transition of brightness from dark at the top of the sky to brighter at the horizon, which is going to eliminate the halo side effect and will make your edit look more natural. And by natural, I'm referring to what is known as the atmospheric condition that you'll see in nature, which simply means that the sky is typically darker at the top versus at the horizon. And we can see that in this image here. And if I turn off the mask in this image, the sky doesn't have that change in brightness level. So that's another benefit of this editing technique since it provides a natural transition from darker to lighter. Okay, so the magic tool we need to complete this edit is the linear gradient. So let's go ahead and add that starting from the top by clicking and dragging it down. Now to avoid the gradient displaying at an angle, we're gonna hold down our shift key to lock it in place, okay? So once you release, you may need to tweak the gradient based on your image and the position of the horizon and other elements. And sometimes to make things easier, I like to display the overlay, which we can do by pressing the letter O and then press it again to hide it if needed. Okay, now we can click either on the top or the bottom bar and then click and drag it to make it skinnier or broader based on what you need. And then you can click in the center here to reposition it that way as well. So let's go ahead and turn off that overlay again. And as you can see, the halo is gone. All right, so this next editing tip will boost your productivity as well because you may not be aware of it like I was, and that is the AI masking feature in Lightroom doesn't require your images to have the subject be exactly the same or in the same position when batch processing. So I have three images here, each with a different person in a different position with a different horizon. Now, because of that, you would think you would have to come up here and create a new mask for them individually which is going to take a long time compared to batch processing. And we can actually do that. So what we can do is actually, let me show you this image here first. We have two masks that I've already created with some minor adjustments. So in order to copy them into the other two images, there's two options to do so. You can select the next image in the sequence and click on the previous button. And then the edit settings from the previous image that you edited will be copied to this new one. And as you can see, we now have a sky and a subject selected. Now, the other way is when you have multiple images that you want to edit or batch process. So 10, 20, 30, however many you need, it doesn't matter. You're gonna go ahead and select the first image, hold down your shift key and click on the last image to select all the images in between. Now that you have all of them selected, you can click on the sync button here to get the synchronized settings, which is going to copy the edit settings from the first image to all the rest once you click on synchronize. But make sure you have masking turned on before you do that. And then once you click on synchronize, depending on how many images you have selected and the number of masks, it's going to take a few seconds to a few minutes or longer to copy all those settings from one to all the rest. Now, I'll admit it's not perfect. So we do have a mask for this particular image at least the sky, but it wasn't able to recognize the person in this particular image. And that's because her face isn't showing. So Lightroom really isn't sure where that person is. So now we need to go in and add and remove from that mask or select a different mask option. Now, that is why I recommend if you wanna learn more about editing with masks and editing in general, check out this video tutorial next.